you guys seem to really enjoy the last talking about new makeup releases that I put up and said you wanted to see more of them. So here we go. Let's talk about some new makeup releases. Before we get into it, let's go ahead and do the YouTube things. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Let's get started. The usual sitting to the side photos will be here. Instagram accounts that I use, sorry, will be linked down below for you guys to check out as well. And if any of the products are available right now, I will try and remember to link them for you guys if you're interested in any of them. Uh, also, just remember, this is my opinion. We can have different opinions. It's okay. It's just makeup. This is just my personal opinion. Um, in no way is it meant to be like insinuated that it's yours as well or anything like that. You know the drill. And this makeup look is coming. Promise. So. Uh, what's on the eyes though is Ritualistic Rose and Velvet Liaison from Pat McGrath Labs and the lips is Lisa Eldridge Petal with the Vive Rosa lip do over the top. First up, uh, Makeup Forever has a new HD Skin Matte Velvet 24 Hour Blurring and Undetectable Powder. I actually have already picked this up and I already have two videos in which I've used it. They will be coming right after this video, so next week, stay tuned. Um, I... Yeah, I, I don't know why, I just, I just was like saw it and I was like, okay, I'm really intrigued. Let's go ahead and pick this up. I know the last like matte velvet one got a heap of hype and they've reformulated it. Um, I love the packaging and so far I actually, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, really like the powder. I really do. I haven't used it as a powder foundation yet, more of just like a setting powder because I don't usually just use like powder foundations. Um, but as like an extra, like I've been doing like a light layer of foundation coverage and then just using that as like the extra bit of coverage I want and a setting powder. I, I really like it. It's actually on my face today. So there you go. I really like it. Honestly, I think one of the claims of it is that it's 24 hour blurring, mattifying and comfort, um, natural matte finish. So, okay. 24 hour blurring, mattifying and comfort. I don't find this to be 24 hour wearing. Again, haven't worn it as just a powder foundation, but as a setting powder, my face needs to be like reset by the afternoon. Um, medium full coverage, agreed. Natural matte finish, agreed. No caking or creasing, agreed. Um, I don't know about waterproof and sweat proof. I, I, I wouldn't personally really test that unless I was outside sweating, but I'm not usually. <laughs> Um, silky smooth texture agree, agree, sorry, skin like agree. So most of the claims, I just don't think it's probably the one wearing as they say, at least for my combination skin. This is Urban Decay Cross Smiley. So I don't, again, I don't actually know who, who Smiley is. I'm sorry. Is that a brand? I don't, I don't know who Smiley is. So I'm not meaning to offend who Smiley is, but, um, I do one like that. These are two small palettes from them. I do like that. I do like the packaging. I think the packaging is utterly adorable. Very, very cute. So A++ for the packaging. But the color stories are just extremely boring and repetitive to me. I feel like I own all of these colors and there's just nothing interesting in these color stories to warrant me picking it up to try. And I want to, I actually really want to try a lot more from Urban Decay, but they're just not interesting to me. Apart from the packaging, the packaging is freaking amazing, but this color story is so boring to me. And it's just, it just doesn't spark any interest for me. So it's a firm no. Laura Mercier is bringing out a new foundation. So the Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Foundation. I can't remember if I talked about this last time or not. So I'm sorry if I did. We're going to repeat it if I did. Um, a weightless foundation that blurs the line between makeup and skin. Medium buildable coverage. Uh, natural finish, waterproof wear. What's up with the waterproof wear this year? Everyone's waterproof. Up to 12 hours of fade proof wear, 48 US dollars, 30 shades, um, available today or tomorrow as I'm filming this. Shade range, I'm interested to see. It looks pretty average to me. It looks very much like 50 shades of color that will probably suit my skin tone and maybe one or two that would fit medium and deep skin tones. But I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments down below, uh, my people that are deeper than me in skin color, what you guys think, but I am, I'm not going to lie. I'm very interested in trying that. I do actually like Laura Mercier as a brand. Their complexion products are really quite lovely. Speaking of Laura Mercier, they released the tinted moisturizer bronzers again, shade range. Okay. Four, but at least they did go quite deep on this one, but 
you know, could we get six and could we really go like, if you haven't got a bronzer to cover Nima Tang, you haven't done good enough in my mind. You know what I mean? I always just, whenever I think of bronzers and see bronzer was released, I always think of like Nima Tang constantly doing videos, testing out bronzers to find one for her skin tone. I don't know why brands wouldn't just hire her to like do their shade range. Anyway, but I will say, I know a lot of people didn't like the tinted moisturizers moisturizer blushes from them. I loved it. I loved that formula. I still have one. I love it. So yeah, as soon as I can get my grubby little mitts on one of these tinted moisturizer bronzers, I absolutely will be because I, I, I like it. I'm intrigued. I'm not going to lie. Um, Patrick Tal, while we're here, also extended his cream and contour powder, sorry, cream contour and powder bronzer shade range, which is good about time. I think the shades are good that he's added in. And then um, One Size also released like an extra color in their 3D cheek clappers. They're not my kind of a blush. But granted, when I talked about, you know, regretting picking them up, the one thing I forgot to mention is that, because uh, I regret picking them up, they're not my kind of a formula, they're just too pigmented for me. But they are really well suited to deeper skin tones. So I think that's brilliant, right? I have enough blushes that work for me. So um, I think if you love how pigmented these blushes are, uh, yeah, these blushes are, then, you know, you'll really like them. Because they are a good formula. They were just too pigmented for me. Huda Beauty. This one I thought was quite interesting. It seems like Matte Shadows is going to have a moment this year. Um, so Huda Beauty is releasing two new matte obsession eyeshadow palettes. So these are her little nine pans and one is a warm matte obsessions and the other is a cool matte obsessions and the cool one has more like icy mauves. The other one has like browns. I actually am not going to pick these up. Normally I would for like even just a review at this point for my channel, but honestly I do not need these in any way, shape or form. And from previous experience, I don't think Hooters matte formula is up there enough for me to like run out and get it and be like, yeah, but I'm, I'd still use it for ex like if it was busy up, for example, I could get it because I know that their formula is so good that it wouldn't matter if I have like all these colors and other brands because their formula is so good for me. But I just haven't had that experience with Huda and these color stories are just so repetitive to what I already own. And I just have so many eyeshadow palettes that I really would like to enjoy that this isn't different enough or interesting enough for me to pick up um granted they are small these little obsessions so i think if you're looking for like a little travel eyeshadow palette where it's just got all of the shades like you could put these two little nine pans and a couple of shimmer shades or cream shadows or whatever that have metallics into you like a travel bag or like a gym bag if you get ready at the gym for work and stuff and it wouldn't take up much space and it would be all you need but I don't need that right now. So yeah, I'd be interested to see what you guys think about those Huda Beauty palettes actually. The new Armani Beauty blushes, Luminous Silk Glow Blush. I am excited. I'm excited for these. I cannot wait to try one. So Luminous Silk Finish that drapes your skin like silk, fine pigments, gives your skin a natural transparent flush. Um, I really like that they've gone quite bold with these colors because saying that it's a natural transparent flush of color means that it shouldn't really be super, super pigmented, which means they're going to need the bolder colors for deeper skin tones as well. And then there's some lighter colors in here for the lighter skin tones. So I'm super keen to get my hands on one of these blushes. And if you guys find them anywhere, let me know. Let me know. LYS released eyeshadow palettes. Did you guys see this? I feel like I have seen not one person talk about these, but I could be wrong. Um, maybe they're not out yet, but LYS has released a love yourself eyeshadow palette. I think, I believe there's two, 25 US dollars each. Um, and they're in their little triangle packaging. And listen, I really, really like LYS as a brand, really like them, but some of their products are really good. And some of their products, not so good for me personally. I've talked about that in the past and I would love to try the eyeshadows. But I don't know, you guys, I might get one because one, they're really, they are quite affordable, which is awesome. So it is easy enough for me to pick one up when it gets released in Australia to at least try their formula. But just for me, these color stories are not exciting. Like I don't look at these color stories and go, oh, I can't wait to like play with this on my eyes. They're just, they're not my colors. They're just not my color stories um, personally. So I don't know. I'm going to wait until I see them pop up on Sephora Australia and then maybe I'll pick one up. Maybe I won't. House Labs, actually their blushes must be coming out soon. I can't remember if I talked about this in my last one either. I'm sorry. 
it's all been a blur. It already feels like it's been a year since that last video. Um, but House Labs is bringing out the Color Fuse blushes. It's a mega sized velvety soft clean talc free blush. I feel like I remember talking about this. I really do. Anyway, uh, they should be out soon because it says February 23rd on their website, which is February 24th for Australia, which is coming up. $38 each. That's US. Yes, I will be buying some. Probably Pomelo Peach. Although Watermelon Bliss looks really cute too. And so does Acai Sky. And so uh, all of them. I want all of them. I won't buy all of them, but I want all of them. <sighs> Painful. I want all the blushes. I just never realized I had such a thing for blush. And then it's the, I think it's nearly, apart from eyeshadow palettes, like the thing I own the most. <laughs> and you never go through a blush. Anyway, doesn't matter. It's all makeup fun. This product is sold out, but I just wanted to tell you, I really wanted to buy this palette. This is the Muse, uh, sorry, Cosmic Brushes Muse palette. And it is beautiful, beautiful. The color story is impeccable. I love it. But it got released at 2 a.m my time and I'd had a big week and I was so tired and I did set my alarm but when my alarm went off I was like you know what right in this moment I can't care to get up and order this at 2am and then I was like I jumped on it straight away first thing in the morning and it had obviously sold out and then the pre-order had also sold out so I've missed out I'll get it at some point when it comes back but I just want to say I did try well I didn't try that hard but I did want it so you know I think it's beautiful. Lisa Eldridge also released some new lip glosses. I absolutely want nearly every single one of them. Shan't lie. They look beautiful. I haven't tried her gloss formula yet, but I'm just going to wait until either I just have kind of, I guess, some extra money lying around or she releases something else. Because the one thing I find so hard with Lisa is that you have to spend £98 to get free shipping on her website, which is like 200 Australian dollars. And then if you don't want to spend the 98 pound, the shipping is like 40 pound or 20 pound or something. So it all works out to almost be the same and you might as, might as well just spend the shipping threshold. So I just need, honestly, Lisa's shipping prices to either come down or her to release new products so that I can like just do the order in once. But I, I really do think they look beautiful. And I don't know, let me know, do you guys really think her lip gloss formula is worth it? Do you? Let me know. Milk Makeup has released these little sculpt cream contour sticks. It is the contour time of the year. I want them. I think they're not getting released in Australia until March sometime, end of March. I will try the Toasted Fair to Light because it looks like a really nice like proper cream, um, oh, sorry, proper cool contour tone. So I'm into that. And I know my friend Patty picked one up and she didn't really like it. I'm interested to try it and compare it because I used to really like the matte bronzer that they had or they still have I think so I'm interested to compare them so I will try that but it is expensive for the size of it you guys like so expensive have you guys tried it because I know it's out in the US Gucci released a new foundation the Eternity D Beauté foundation SPF 15 powered by a combination of high skin affinity powders and coated pigments designed to cocoon the skin with a hydrated and breathable finish, blah, blah, blah. It does have bamboo powder in it to help control shine for up to 24 hours while blurring the pores and 40 shades. I will say Gucci does pretty well with their shade range, huh? Like pretty darn well, especially for a high-end brand. Well done, well done, good job. Uh, anyway, I was gonna buy this, I went on to buy it, but the ingredients suck. So I don't think I will. I can't remember, was there coconut in it? Because I draw the line at coconut, I've managed to figure out that I can kind of tolerate some fragrance. Fragrance isn't as big of a deal to me right now, except in a primer it is, but I draw the line at, at coconut. So I think there might have been coconut in there. I have to go revisit and have a look. But if there's not coconut, actually, I will bite the billet bullet and pick that up and give it a gaze. I will. I will. I'll do it for science. Hermes released, uh, or is releasing, I think they dropped, I keep seeing people being like, these things are released now on Selfridges and I go into Selfridges and I think I either just miss them or I don't know what, but they're never available there when I look. Anyone else having that issue? Um, but Hermes has got the plain air, I, I'm saying that wrong, it's probably like plain or something. Um, air Healthy Glow Mineral Powder. I think it's a bronzer. I've seen on like, um, oh my god, I am drawing a blank, Jacqueline. Jacqueline. I've seen on Jacqueline and like Charlotte Holcross in that's videos, they're calling them a bronzer. Um, they're expensive. I, from looking at it, it's looking like it's going to be over $150 for this powder Australian. Yeah, um, I'll get it. 
because I'm just a sucker. I'm a sucker. I'm ridiculous. Uh, shade range is appalling. So they could have done better with that for sure. But I'm intrigued. I don't know what, I don't know. Is it a bronzer? What, what is it? I need to know, but I need to see it available and then I'll decide. But look, listen, I'll probably pick it up. Let's be real. Uh, I don't know if that's for, this is my, my target market per se. Uh, I like Ismaya. I actually really applaud that she's just going it for it. You know, I really do. I applaud that she's going for it because why not? Honestly, why freaking not? It's something different at least. I personally won't be picking it up. One, because it's 95 US dollars and there's no way I would ever pay that much for like a well well yeah because 95 us dollars is like 140 australian dollars i think off the top of my head or 130 that's a lot for a lipstick and it's not hermes okay i draw the line hermes is the most li expensive lipstick i've bought but for me it's hermes and i'm a luxury biatch for that like luxury makeup biatch for that and you know it's an hermes packaging not a penis packaging you know so I can't see myself, maybe if I really was into this specific shape of packaging, then it would be well worth it, you know? <laughs> but for me, it's not. However, I do really like the shades. I really like the look of that black brownie shade. It looks really cool. And I fully applaud just doing her. I really do. At least it's something different. So Chanel has released their spring summer collection, like what it's going to be. I think they've kind of like officially released like what it is. Um, and I know that in the US you can get the, these little palettes in stores already. So you would have already seen some reviews, but um, I don't know when will when and if we will be getting them physically in the Australian stores. Hopefully, hopefully we will. Um, and I don't know when they'll be released online. Let me know if you found them anywhere online. Um, but these are eyeshadow and blush palettes. So they're quite big. If you've seen like Nicole Aaron's, Aaron Nicole, apologies, um, video like review on these, they're huge. They're lovely. And yes, I actually will be buying at least one of these. I think probably just one given the price. Um, I think, I really think they're beautiful. I'm probably going to get 957 Tendresse. Tendresse? I don't know. I can't speak French, but they just look beautiful to me. Um, I've not tried an, a Chanel like eyeshadow or blush or anything like that. I really haven't deep dived into Chanel much at all. And I am quite intrigued to try it. And it just, it seems like a lovely product to me. So I will be buying one of those. Um, I probably won't get anything else in this collection. I'll be honest. The nail polish colors. I've been getting into painting my own nails. Not today. They're not, they're not done today, but I have been getting into painting my own nails and everything. So if these colors were like more intriguing to me, I might have picked one up because I'm starting to really get into nail polish for some reason. Um, but they are not, and I don't need a mascara or the other things, but I will pick up one of those palettes. Dior Summer 2023. Two new eyeshadow palettes. So these are the eyeshadow palettes here. I actually think these look really boring. <laughs> really beautiful, but really boring, right? Like, honestly, I don't mind that brownie blue one, but not for me. I'm almost tempted to pick that up for my mum. I think my mum would really like that. You know, they're kind of her colors that she would wear on the everyday. The second one, again, it's just, I get it. Like if you're a neutral lover and all that kind of thing and you love Dior and you pick it up or you collect it, like it's it's not like you wouldn't, you wouldn't not get use out of this palette, right? Like it's such an everyday wearable palette, but it's just not interesting enough for me to like fork out the money on. But I I might even honestly for, the, for enabling myself in the sake of science, pick up that blue one and then do it, show you guys, play with it, see what I think and then give it to my mom. Because that's like a win-win for everybody. But we'll see. We'll see. Also, Chanel has the Chanel LeBlanc 2023 Spring Makeup Collection. And I do think that quite a few places are starting to see this collection pop up for sale. So I think the eyeshadow quad is cute. It's a little bit different from their normal kind of color stories that they do. Not a color story that I am going to pick up. It's just not something that I would get any use out of. See, like I know I spent a lot of money on the Tom Ford quads, but they're color stories that I will use. So I don't mind spending it um, 
on the quad or you know I don't mind buying the luxury makeup as long as it's color stories and makeup that I'm actually going to wear every day and I just wouldn't wear this but I do appreciate that it's slightly different to what they normally release. The blush is cute if I see that in store and I give it a swatch and I'm half interested in it I may pick up the blush maybe. Um, I do think that is kind of cute, but it looks a little bit shimmery for me, so we'll see. And then those sticks, I know they have coconut in them for one because I've actually looked at like a more neutrally one of those to try and I couldn't, it, the ingredients was a no for me, but also I just don't like those colors either. So it's a no. It's a no. Oh, Dominique Cosmetics has released, I think it's available now, the Essential Eyeshadow Palette. I can't rem I don't think we've talked about this. I feel like, she hasn't she already released this before? Is this new? It's pretty, don't get me wrong. This is actually a very pretty palette. I'm half tempted to pick up another Dominique Cosmetics eyeshadow palette because her Lemonade palette was, what I mean, granted this was years ago and I've, one, gotten so much more experience with my makeup since then and formulas, but I just remember, I just thought that that Lemonade palette from Dominique Cosmetics had the best eyeshadow formula ever, period. Like, I remember I was so head over heels in love with it. And I'm so interested in retrying the brand to see if I still think that about her formula. And I think this is actually, this one, if I was going to pick up any out of all of them, is probably one of the better ones because it's definitely tones that you would wear. But then it's also tones that I have in other formulas that are just so incredible and impeccable to me that it's like, would I even use this? Has Have any of you tried any of her products like recently? Have any of you? I'm, I'm kind of interested. I, I also am interested in her concealer as well. Um, Kristen Dominique is one of the reasons that I got into makeup, like, or not one of the reasons, but she's one of the reasons that kind of like put me on the journey of being like, oh, I could do social media and I could do YouTube. So I always have such a soft spot for her. But I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about that. All right, friends, I think that is it for today. I think that's all of the releases that are of interest that I want to talk about at least. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. I'm extremely interested to hear what you guys are interested in, like knowing more products that you're interested in knowing more about at the moment, brands that you're interested in knowing more about, but also like, are you planning on picking any of these products up? It does feel like, I guess, the industries are picking back up again this year and it feels like makeup releases are just like pew. So even for me, it's been quite overwhelming just to keep up. So yeah, just let me know what, what you guys think. I'm really interested to see like what is actually sparking your interest at the moment, especially when it is so saturated, like what stands out to you. But yeah, other than that, I hope you had fun. That's the main thing. And if you're watching till this point, you're an absolute legend. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. If you haven't already, pretty please give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And I hope you have the most amazing day wherever you are in the world and I'll see you next time. Bye.